right, we're here at the U.S. Olympic Team Trials. Look at the science of buoyancy. Okay, so the real question is, how are kayakers benefited by buoyancy? But first, let's understand how buoyancy really works. Now, let's look at the forces acting on this system. The force of gravity has a downward force, which is basically the weight of the kayaker in his gear. A motionless kayaker here has a buoyant force that equals the downward force of gravity. It also means that if this kayaker and his gear have a mass of 160 pounds, the boat is displacing 160 pounds of water. You see, the more water you displace, the greater the buoyant force. Right now, we have Pablo. What's actually going on um, with buoyancy? With this buoyancy, the great thing about this boat is with the back of the boat being so, so thin, you can get that back under. I'm putting the whole back of my boat underwater. Put it underwater, it's gonna to wanna to come back out. And so I'm putting in the back of the boat with, with that force, I'm exploding out, and I'm trying to re-accelerate because slalom is all about starting and stopping. And you wanna start, get back up to speed as soon as possible. Let's review the science of it now. As Pablo paddles, the forces are pretty equal. Then, as he throws a turn, he uses his momentum to drive the back end of his boat underwater. This creates a huge amount of buoyant force. And, because of the shape of his boat, he can direct this force to propel him out of the turn. Pretty sweet, huh? But, slalom kayakers aren't the only kayakers that use buoyant forces. Alright, so now, Sam is in his playboat and he's going to show me how he uses buoyancy. Playboats are really all about buoyancy and how it's packed really close to my knees and right in front of me. Um, so a lot of times what we're doing in playboat is these big and playboating is these big aerial maneuvers where we're doing flips and spins and things like that. So what we're actually completely relying on um, is all the air in here to pretty much launch us into the air. Um, so we take um, just kind of however we're paddling or surfing a wave, we rely completely on all this air um, to go into the water and then shoot us back out so we catch air for our tricks. Okay, let's look at the forces acting on Sam. At rest, they're equal. At the top of his bounce, there's less displacement of water, so the buoyant force is much less than gravity. That pulls him down. At the bottom of his bounce, the buoyant force is greater. He uses that to launch himself out of the water. Last challenge. Now we have a challenge. Okay, you can see behind me here, we actually have a raft coming in. Now, the raft has a huge amount of buoyant force and it would be really hard to pull it down because of the volume of air in that raft. Here are the raft specs and our question. How much force do you think it would take to, to submerge this whole raft? Oh, oh gosh, I, I hard, a lot. It takes a lot. Send us your calculations and answers in the comments. For more information, go to untamedscience.com slash buoyancy. And remember, we're on Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube.